That one terrorist is just cartoonishly huge. I'm pretty sure he's got urine in his steroids. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Ioni Thompson, and this is my review of Sky Hunter. Sky Hunter is the directorial debut of Lee Chen, who is also one of the stars of the film. He's also engaged to Fan Bingbing, who is one of the other stars in the film. But none of these stars shine as brightly as the Red Star of Socialism, because Sky Hunter was written by Zhang Li, an officer in the People's Liberation Army Air Force. Plath. Sky Hunter was also made with the assistance and supervision of the PLAAF Political Works Department. It's the first film to feature footage of actual Chinese military planes and bases, and a lot more footage of CGI airplanes, explosions, and other stuff. Because you don't want to be too realistic. This point is made during the opening credits, when we see a CGI pistol firing a cartridge. Not a bullet, it fires the entire cartridge you're doing it wrong. The movie opens in the West Philippine Sea, where the valiant PLAAF is conducting a routine intercept of a spy plane from an unspecified nation that's violating China's sovereign airspace, or what we like to call international airspace. I found it slightly rich that these two hotshot pilots perform an unsafe intercept of an aircraft, and yet the movie wants us to think that the intercepted aircraft is at fault when things get a little hairy. That's not a puberty euphemism. Considering an officer of the PLAAF wrote this script, I found it funny that a four-engine turboprop can somehow outrun a fighter jet, but as we will see, aeronautic verisimilitude is in short supply in this movie. One thing I will give Sky Hunter's writer credit for, that scene contains a profoundly obvious homage to Top Gun, kinda like the rest of the movie. But at least Top Gun does get name checked in dialogue later on. And I honestly did laugh. I couldn't tell you how much this movie resembles Top Gun because I've never seen it. It's my father's fault. He served in the United States Navy for three decades and as he told me it took most of that first decade to learn that fucking Airedale was two words. But let's move on, shall we? Sky Hunter tells the story of a trio of friends that also seems at one point to be a love triangle. Yeah, there's a shower scene, but the flight suit stays on. Really. These three people get selected for Sky Hunters, China's elite Air Force unit. They laugh, they cry, they pass all the tests. That's really not a spoiler. One of them gets posted overseas to a totally fictitious country. Strangely, or not, all the politicians, government officials, and military personnel of any considerable rank are all as white as I am, and some of them even have British accents. Also is to ask for reason many Islamic terrorisms has people speak of English with Russian accentsky. Seriously, I needed the subtitles in this movie just as much for the English as for the Chinese. Besides, I really have to admit, entering Discontinuous Valley segment in 15 seconds is a good contender for subtitle of the year. Speaking of which, at one point, somebody says quite clearly, I smell freedom. The subtitle, on the other hand, says, I smell scent of losers. I see what you did there. No, I don't, actually. So Mabul is obviously a dangerous place, and faster than you can say Leon Klinghoffer, we've got a hostage crisis at the Mabul Air Force Base. You know it's an Air Force Base because of the illuminated letters that spell out Air Force Base. Somewhere in China, there's an international crisis hotline phone with nation-specific caller ID. The phone rings and we can see that it's Mabul calling. Unsurprisingly, the rest of the movie turns into jingoism wow and dispenses with any subtlety, reason, or attention to logic. The PLAAF obviously spent a lot of time trying to get all the details right, which may be why the commander of a SAM detachment gives out the order, guys, we'll use all of the machines. I'm not really sure that the best way to stop a missile that's being launched is by dropping a bomb on it. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe heat-seeking missiles do frequently divert from the jet engine they're honed in on to suddenly strike a snow-covered mountain. Who knows? Certainly not the people that made this movie. There's a scene in the film where somebody tells a Chinese pilot, What if the war will start tomorrow? Are you guys even ready? Unfortunately, given how outlandishly unrealistic all the aerial combat in this movie is, I think that guy is right. If this is what the PLAAF thinks that aerial combat in the 21st century looks like, 
we can all rest easy. Then again, if the PLAAF could use the CGI fighters that we see in most of the movie, we're all doomed. All our real airplanes would look like their real airplanes. Who leaves a conveniently fueled and fully armed fighter jet on a runway just in case? Greasy little foreigners who incur the wrath of China, that's who. Lighten up, Francis. There's a, a lot of eye-roll-worthy moments in Sky Hunter, but if I'm fair, it's no worse than you'd get from a lot of American movies of the last 30 years. I honestly have no problem with Sky Hunter's politics, because unlike a lot of Hollywood movies, at least it's honest and open about it from frame one. Look, everybody needs something to believe in, and if it's Fan Bingbing standing at the end of a runway with her mouth open in an oddly suggestive manner, I can get behind that, so to speak. I'm not really even sure why they bothered to release Sky Hunter in Hong Kong. I mean, nobody's gonna go see it. But I'm sincerely glad that they did. As I've said before with, you know, Founding of an Army and Wolf Warrior, America's been making these kind of movies for a lot of years, and so at least this way it's kind of nice to see a different perspective. If you want to go watch it in the cinema, do it. Maybe you should even spring for the vibrating seats and all that stuff, because it'd probably be fun that way. If you don't get a chance to do that, wait till you can rent or buy it. Don't steal this movie. I wouldn't try to rob the People's Liberation Army Air Force. Something tells me that's not a hobby with a future. When this movie gets released to home video, I'll update the description with a link where you could buy it. And since we're talking about money, you know the drill. Please click on my Patreon page. For just a couple dollars a month, you could make a significant difference in my life. And I really hope that you would do that because sometimes when I'm sitting around, I'll choose to watch a movie I want to watch. But if you pay me, you get to choose a movie I don't want to watch. And you get to watch me watch the movie and be miserable. You know, for a couple of bucks, that's a pretty good deal. If you like this review, please let me know. If you didn't, please let me know. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.